line. Uh, if you didn't, uh, raise your hands. Uh, there's some good information. I, I hope that, it's, uh, that you find it good. Uh, but tonight we're learning about Jesus, Jesus foretold. And we're going to be looking in Luke chapter 1, verse 28 through 38. And I would also ask you to mark uh, your, your Bibles with Isaiah. Go to Isaiah uh, chapter 7. We're going we're gonna to jump back to Isaiah about, about halfway through this message briefly. So uh, we're going to look at some parallels here. And I'm super excited about the message tonight because my brother Michael is preaching Wednesday night and his message is right in line with the message God gave me. So what we learned tonight, Michael's like, it's like we're in a race and I'm, I'm running and handing the baton and he is keeping, keeping on going. So God is good. He is, he is certainly using Michael and I uh, in, in our pastor's absence and we are blessed and certainly, certainly humbled so humbled to be able to share what God is, is sharing with us. So uh, if you have your Bibles open, if you could please stand as we read God's Word. And we're, we're going to go ahead and start with verse 26. I've got 28 through 38, but we're going to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Heavenly Father, please speak to our hearts tonight, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. So as I was looking over this, message and praying about it and going through it, uh, I, I learned a little bit. One of the things that I learned is that it's believed by many Bible scholars that Luke, the, the author of this, the, the writer of this book, not the author, the writer of this gospel, learned these details directly from interviewing Mary. So Dr. Luke wanted to find out the accounts of all this as he was writing the, the gospel of Luke. He wanted to find out exactly what happened. Kind of, He interviewed her. And so, uh, as he was doing the research for it. So, as we look at these verses tonight, I hope we can grasp just how special this is and how humbled Dr. Luke must have felt to have had the opportunity to spend time with Mary and to learn these intimate details of, of this event that happened. But I also pray that we, tonight, tonight, if, if, if you're listening, and if you're listening online, I pray that we, tonight, We'll learn from Mary's example and that we can apply it to our walk with Jesus, with our service, and with our lives. So as we get into the message tonight, point number one, what I'd like to look at is the great announcement. This was a great announcement, verse 28 through 33. And, and what he said was, or what this says is, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. And, and 
so he's telling Mary that she's going to have a baby. I mean, it's, this, it, it's just amazing that, that this announcement comes. And we, we know from reading God's word that Mary was a virgin. So uh, these, these verses, though, they reflect that the, the, angel, uh, the angel Gabriel telling Mary that she's going to conceive a son, but not just any son, right? The son of God. And can you imagine how Mary must have felt and this angel's coming to her and telling her this? And, and in the previous verses in 26 and 27, uh, we, it was revealed that Mary had been pledged to be married to Joseph in the lineage of King, of King David and that she's a virgin. So our scripture is telling us this. And Gabriel gives her the news. And as we explore it tonight, I hope that you see just how incredible this announcement really is because it is, it, it is amazing. As we look at this great announcement, in point A, we're going to look at the grace the grace endowed in verse 28. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. You know, we learned on Wednesday night that rejoice is defined as great joy and happiness over an unanticipated or a present good. You know, I think we can all agree that based on what we just read, <laughs> this was certainly unanticipated from Mary, right? This angel comes to her and tells her, you're going you're gonna to have God's baby. Wow, that was un unanticipated. But it was, also, it, was, it was also a present good. I mean, here, here we are. She's, she's re the, this angel's telling her, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And so as we look at that, it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Well, Gabriel goes on to say, highly favored. And highly favored can be translated as full of grace. So here's this angel telling her, rejoice, rejoice over this unanticipated present good. You are highly, you are the high, a highly favored one. And so uh, the word grace again, or, or let's see, no, let me, let me back up. Mary was given this special grace or this high favor to carry out God's plan. This special grace to carry out this plan. Think about that. Giving birth to Jesus. And as you think about that, no other person in God's word, I, I searched through it, uh, no other person in God's word has been called highly favored by God other than Mary at this point because no other person has had such grace bestowed upon them now we've received if we're saved we've received the grace of Jesus and our salvation but Mary was highly favored and was given the the honor and the privilege of carrying God and that's that's amazing that is just amazing and so as we think about that you know uh, I want to look at the greeting the greeting considered. So here's this, grace has been endowed to Mary. Now she's considering this greeting in verse 29. You know, she was troubled. It says she was troubled at, this, at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Now, the, this, this announcement, it obviously confused Mary, right? I mean, this angel's coming to her, telling her she's going to have a baby, and she's a virgin, you know? So it, it, I'm sure it confused her. But here it is, her, her confusion quickly turned to consideration. So she was troubled at a saying, but it says, and she considered what manner of greeting this was. When, when we see that she considered what manner of greeting this was, uh, look at it as meaning that she thought about this very, very carefully in her mind. Think about that. I mean, how would you respond if, if an angel came to you and said, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among men. Shane, blessed are you among men. Okay, because I mean, she hasn't heard yet that she's going to have the baby. She's just heard this, and now she's troubled because, wait a minute, rejoice, highly favored one. This angel, this angel Gabriel has come to her, and he's told her, rejoice, highly favored one. I mean, that's an honor, and I'm sure it's very humbling for her to be even think, wait a minute, highly, highly highly favored the Lord is with you blessed are you among women Jan blessed are you among women okay so she 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 had to think about that 
An angel comes to you and says that. Okay, okay. I'd venture to say that any one of us here would step back and ponder, consider, hmm, what is he saying? Where is this coming from? Wait a second. Hmm. So as we think about this greeting, considered, think about Mary thinking about that, right? And, and as we think about that, in point C, let's look at the goodness that was found. And here's the angel. He says in verse 30, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And to find favor means to be accepted. When we find favor, we're accepted. Or maybe it's to mean, it, it means to be gracious to someone. So here's Gabriel. Gabriel told her, Don't be afraid, Mary. Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You know, grace isn't dependent on what someone does. Right? Mary didn't do anything special to deserve this grace that God is giving to her. Grace is an extension of God's favor, of his kindness. So he's extending his kindness to Mary. So as we look at this great announcement and the grace that was endowed to Mary and the greeting that she considered about all this and then the goodness that was found in it, I want to also look at the greatness that's revealed from this from this great announcement, the greatness revealed. And in verse 31 through 33, and, and this is what God's word says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most highest and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. As we think about the greatness of this message, of this announcement that she's received, as we think about this, you know, of all the women who ever lived, past, present, and future, God chose Mary to carry his son. To carry Jesus, to give birth to Jesus, to nurture him as he grew, to raise the son of the Most High in her household. She was highly favored. And as we look further, you know, we, you, can, you, you think about that. But as we look further at what's happening right here in these, these three verses right here, we see several prophecies that were mentioned concerning Jesus. So if you can turn back to Isaiah 7.14. Isaiah 7.14. We're going to look in the Old Testament and see exactly what was said about Jesus and these prophecies fulfilled in these verses. In Isaiah 7, 14, this is what it says. This is what God's word says. The virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. So here is a prophecy fulfilled. But then we go on to Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. God, that, that will preach. And as we see, as we look at this verse, we see that Jesus' birth certainly is miraculous. It is, it is miraculous. And that he will be God and man. Because of Mary, Jesus was born a human. Right, Miss Jan? He was born a human. But as the eternal Son of God and a member of the Trinity, he is God. And it's amazing. And, and here, Isaiah tells us there will be no end. And here, in the previous scripture, he said, and of his kingdom there will be no end. In verse 33 of Luke, of Luke 1. And that, that is amazing to see this prophecy is fulfilled. Yes, Miss Jan. Wow. Miss Jan says that in her Bible she's got to note that was 500 years before Jesus was born. Was, was, this was what was going on. This was the prophecy. And here we are 500 years later. 500 years less nine months. Later. And... 
the prophecy is being fulfilled. So as we look at, at point one, we saw the great announcement. But now I want to look at point two. And here in point two is a good question asked. Right? Mary asks a really good question here in verse 34. Mary asks the angel, how will this be since I do not know a man? And, and here it is, guys. Mary asked in faith, not in doubt. Not in doubt. She, she asked in faith. Her question sought clarification. Can you tell me how this is going to happen? I, I don't know a man. I've never known a man. And it, it truly revealed her humility and her humanity. You know, wait a minute. Me, a lowly female that's a virgin, that I'm just a simple human. And you're going to ask me, you know, I'm going to carry the, the Son of God? What? Wow. So she didn't doubt what the angel said. She was curious as to how it would be since she was pure. How's that going to happen? And, you know, sometimes as I looked at this, it got me thinking. Sometimes God asks us to do something. Sometimes God asks us to step outside of that comfort zone. And at times, don't we question why? Why? How? We, it, okay, Lord, yes, I'm willing to step out, but why? Tell, you know, how's this going to happen? Why is this happening? Okay, Lord, I trust you. And that's it. Mary trusted. Mary trusted. Because in point three, we see a glorious, a glorious answer revealed. Verse 35, this is what the angel answers. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. You know, this is how the virgin birth is explained. Clearly, simply, and you know, Mary may not have understood just how spectacular this birth was going to be, but she knew that a miracle was going to happen. She knew that a miracle was going to happen. And she had a conversation with an angel, and she had the faith to trust God's plan for her life, regardless of what other people thought. I mean, you think about that. Here's this virgin, and we read in, in verse 26 and 27, she was betrothed to Joseph. To be married. She wasn't married. To be married. And now she's going to be carrying a baby. And people, I'm sure people, oh, there goes that Mary. Look at her. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys, we see that all the time now. Uh, when, when a young teenager comes in, oh, look at her. Mm, she was promiscuous or whatever you want to say. I mean, people will give the looks. Mary was, was willing to take on this task out of faith because God needed her. God didn't need her. God gave her the, this. He gave her this opportunity. So uh, consider this. You know, it, it, it's okay to ask questions, but unlike Mary, we have God's word to dig into. You know, whenever we get in situations, we can go into God's word. We've got it right here at our fingertips. And whenever we've got a situation or when God tells us to do something and we say why or how, we can go into his word and look and find and, and pull scriptures, pull scriptures and, and really dig into them and see, okay, God, I understand. This is why you're telling me to do this. Mary didn't have the Bible and she certainly, I mean, even if she was able to get a hold of the Torah, she didn't have the New Testament, so she didn't know how the story ended. We do, we do. And, you know, uh, we've got the Bible to help us through all situations in life. And another thing to think about here is the Holy Spirit came on to Mary. All right? The angel told her the Holy Spirit is going to come on to you. The Holy Spirit's going to come to you. All right? Prior to Jesus going on the cross, the Holy Spirit would show up and go away. It would come on someone, do what the Holy Spirit wanted to do, to lead, guide, and protect, and then go away. So she had the Holy Spirit at that time temporarily. In John 16, 7, Jesus promises us that he will send the Holy Spirit as the helper to dwell in us. And we have God's word at our fingertips. 
we've got the Holy Spirit constantly guiding us. In the Old Testament, for Mary, Mary had the Holy Spirit come, but the Holy Spirit went away. And so for us, guys, we are so, we, sometimes we don't even realize just how blessed we are that we've got God's Word. We've got Jesus' promise that the Holy Spirit's going to come and dwell in us and guide us and lead us if we allow, if we allow Him to. And so that's pretty amazing, you know, for us. Uh, and it's amazing for Mary and her faith. You know, Mary trusted that what God was saying was going to be, and she was willing to be that servant. And so as we look at that, I want to look at point four is a, is a guaranteed promise. This is a guaranteed promise. In verse 36 and 37, uh, this is what the angel told Mary. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. This is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. And here's the guaranteed promise. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And here it is. Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's pregnancy was further proof for Mary. As Mary's talking to this angel and as Mary's being given her marching orders, for this angel to tell her that your family member Elizabeth in her old age, is six months pregnant. For her, she had been barren. Elizabeth had been barren for, for at least 60 years. Uh, and, and how do I know this? Well, uh, some of the research that I've done says that she was probably about 80 to 88 years old when she gave birth to John the Baptist. Okay? She was in her old age. She was advanced in age. So when this angel told Mary, Elizabeth is six months pregnant, Mary had to be going, this has to be God. My, they have been trying for over 60 years, and now you're telling me she is six months pregnant? Wow. And so, so when the angel told her, you know, for with God, nothing is impossible, Mary took Elizabeth's pregnancy as proof, you know. And, and I'm sure that she thought, there's no doubt I'm going to carry this baby. God will use me, for with him nothing is impossible. And when we look at impossible, when we look at this, this few simple words, with God nothing is impossible. I'm reminded of a message uh, that I was uh, blessed to be able to share earlier in the month of, of uh, November on a Wednesday night on the rich young ruler. I don't know if you remember that in, in uh, Matthew 19. Jesus Told, this, uh, told his disciples that it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And his disciples said, who then can be saved? Jesus, who then can be saved? If it's, if a, if it's so hard, I mean, if it, uh, it's it easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And uh, we all know needles are, you know, and a camel trying to go through that, it's impossible in our, in our power. But Jesus told them. Jesus' answer to them was, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And it's amazing that Gabriel used those same words to describe what's going to happen with Mary for Jesus. And then Jesus used the same words to describe how a sinner like you, a sinner like me, a sinner like you, Miss Jan, a sinner like you, Miss Rebecca, how we can go to heaven because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, as I look at that, I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed. I am just amazed at, at how our Savior, his mom probably told him that story when he was a baby, you know, as as she was nurturing him and raising him. And when that angel came to me, I had, you know, he told me I was going to have you. I'm a virgin. I thought, no way. That's impossible. But that angel told me that with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And Jesus said, mm hmm, of course it is. Of course they are. Of course all things are possible. That's my father. And then he got to share that, that same message with his disciples and, and ultimately with us to see that with God, all things are possible. So 
as we, as we look at this. We've looked at the great announcement, and we've looked at a good question asked, and a glorious answer revealed, and a guaranteed promise, a guaranteed promise. Finally, I want us to look at point number five, and that is a grateful servant. Guys, this, this blesses me right here. This blesses me as I hope it blesses you. Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. When this angel told her that, this is what God wants you to do. This is what, what we're, this is, this is God's plans. Mary was, it was, Mary's response was one that all, all, all believers should remember and take to heart. Behold your servant. Let it be according to your word. Let it be according to your will. I'm willing to serve, Lord. I'm willing to go wherever you lead me. I'm willing to do whatever you tell me. I'm willing to serve wherever you send me. Wherever I'm needed, I'm willing to serve. That was Mary. That was Mary's response. Let it be according to your word. And, and that's my prayer for us as a church body, as a body of believers, as visitors. It's so good to have Ken and Andrea with us as visitors. It's my prayer that that's our attitude, that we will serve where we're needed that we will go where God leads us, that we will step out in faith and in trust when God calls us to do something. And guys, with this time of year, this is an, a, a great time to think about that. And it's a great time to think about Mary and, and the, the decision she made. You know, ultimately she said, I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow God. I will, yes. Lord, you send me, I'll go. And, and she took on the most awesome, humbling, amazing assignment that anybody ever could. And because of her willingness, we are the benefactors. We, we are the benefactors of Jesus' birth. We celebrate it with gifts that we give to others. Jesus gave us the ultimate gift. So as we go into this holiday season and as we prepare for Christmas and the, the awesome celebration of his birth, it's my prayer that we remember Mary and that awesome decision she made to follow. I will follow you, God. I will trust you, God. In faith, I will step out. And yes, yes, use me. Use me where you will, Lord. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for, the, for your word and, and, Lord, the examples that you give us to live life. We thank you for the examples of, of people like Mary who we can look at and see that, Lord, she was given an, an incredible, amazing, scary task, and she was willing to step out and do it, and it blessed all of mankind. Lord, may... Even the littlest, the littlest bit of service we do, may it bless mankind and may it more importantly bless you, Jesus. Tonight, as we go into this holiday season, it's our prayer that we recognize Jesus, not as the baby, but as the Savior of this world. And we, we, it's, it's our prayer that we recognize the awesome gift, the most important gift we'll ever receive is the gift of salvation gift of freedom from our sins, the gift of eternal life. So tonight, if you're visiting here, if you're a member here, if you're watching online and you've never experienced that gift, tonight it's here. It's, it's available and it's free by saying a simple, simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and without you, I know that I'm lost and bound to our devils. But tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray that this Christ of Christmas, this Christ of salvation, this Christ of the cross, this Christ of living, of ascension and sitting at the right hand of God will come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior and rescue me from the sin that I'm in. And if you've said that prayer, it's, it's that easy. It's that easy. If you said it, but man thinks it's impossible. God says all things are possible.
call in to the number at the bottom of the screen and let us know. And we want to rejoice with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to thank Jesus for his love for you, for us, for the awesome gift. Church family, as we continue in prayer, be sure to remember those that we discussed at the beginning of services. And as we break into our prayer groups, let's lift those up. To praise those, praise God for the answered prayers. Let's be sure to praise Him when we have to spend time with Thanksgiving with family and friends. Let's praise Him for all that He does for us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Guys, if you wouldn't mind breaking up into our prayer groups and let's praise Jesus. It's my prayer to, to be like Mary because, my gosh, such an amazing. 